Moderate use of backing tracks, like the horns in this song, makes your band stand out when playing some of those commonly played cover tunes. If you want an edge in the competitive cover band market, backing tracks will certainly make you stand out. Check out how the backing tracks pack a punch to end this song with the horns. Hi, I'm John O'Brien. I am the keyboardist for a band called California Credence. We are in Modesto, California. We use backing tracks. We have two resources that I'm going to go over today. Uh, one of them is an app called Multitracker and the other is Ableton Live. I'm only touching on Ableton Live because we went from Ableton Live to Multitracker. But either way, if you're the kind of band that wants to use backing tracks, you are on the right track. First, let's do a quick crash course on making your own custom backing tracks. Stems refer to the independent tracks that are created in your DAW. Each one of these tracks will eventually produce a stem. After recording each backing track instrument, make sure that the length of each track is exactly the same. This makes them function properly when exported as stems. Before recording any track, make sure you have the tempo set properly. In Cubase, once you have the handles around all the tracks, it's time to export the stems. In this, we choose export and then we tag each track to be exported as an independent WAV file. We'll go ahead and change the name of the song to Hard to Handle, which is going to be the song that we're going to be using between two different softwares. Don't forget to check to make sure that it's a WAV file, 44.1 kilohertz at 24 bit depth. That's what seems to work well with us. And as you can see here, these are the resulting stems that are saved in the hard to handle folder. Next, I'm going to create a folder in my iCloud account called hard to handle. And then I'm going to upload the stems that I just created from the folder on my hard drive called hard to handle. For this song, I've recorded a click, a trigger track, which is vocal cues, drums, bass, and a distorted guitar track. I may mute the drums and bass and I will show you that later. And now the tracks are uploaded to my iCloud to be used when I'm using the iPad with Multitracker. But for now we're going to take a look at how we used to do things and that is using Ableton Live where we load the stems directly onto the computer as opposed to the iCloud. So before using the Multitracker app on the iPad We've been using Ableton Live for the past four years. So imagine that we have those tracks uh, or the stems that we created and we put them into the hard to handle folder. I'm going to go ahead and point Ableton to the folder, which is what we would normally do to load a new song. We'll just go into that folder and click on uh, hard to handle and I'll expand this. So each one of these um, stems are loaded into a column and each column in Ableton represents a separate track. Each row in Ableton represents the entire song. And since the stems are of equal length, the song will deploy exactly as it's supposed to. So then we just name this hard to handle and when we launch the song, it'll just go ahead and play and everything will be perfectly in timing. So if you want to have a look at what our performance laptop looks like, this is when all of our songs are loaded. You can see all the different tracks. Then we launch each track using a MIDI controller, and that gives us the chance to do this like scrolling between songs. We launch a song, and while the song is playing, I can scroll to another song down lower or move around to a different song. And while the other song is playing, once I hit play, it'll move to the next song. And so this is tremendous uh, freedom in doing a show because I can bounce between songs whenever I wish. The only problem is, is that the display is hard to see on stage. And that's when Multitracker becomes a handy tool. So the rest of this video is focused on the iPad app Multitracker. Okay, so here we are. Um, you're uh, looking at Multitracker. Um, and uh, this is basically uh, 
the overall you can see me in the reflection hello and you can see my camera um, but if you're looking at the uh, multi-tracker over here you have a, a host of menus I'm just going to show you that there are some in-app purchases for me I've already purchased the audio but you can purchase just audio and just MIDI it's 27 bucks is the total that's the most expensive price I want to get you down to uh, the live view uh, which is where the money is uh, this is where we're trying to get to. This is the current track that's playing. This is the next track that's coming up. And this is the next track that's coming up. Over here you have uh, your listing of uh, order. So this is your set. And since we are California Credence and we play Credence stuff, you'll see some of that in there. Let's say, for example, I want to end on China Grove, but maybe not American Band. That's what this is for. So I can just change the order like that. Well, let's just go ahead and change it back and you see how this is easy and so on and so forth. So that's a super huge, very cool feature. Um, another uh, thing is, is when you start on the start button, it tells you what song you're on. Okay, but uh, the, the one thing that you want to make sure to have a look at is just how compatible this is with uh, other audio interfaces. I plug in this uh, lightning connector. I think that's what you call it. At any rate, and then what will happen is it'll sit there for a minute and then you'll see all of my channels come up. I have 12 output channels that are now configured. That means that I, I am only using four channels, which is typical for backing tracks. One and two is stereo right and left. Three I usually use for bass. Four is for the click and the triggers. And those go into different places in the mixer. I would have to go over that in a larger way. Today we're just focusing on doing backing tracks. So this is where you want to get to and this is what kind of it sounds like. Going off. Now on this particular track, let's say for example uh, I'm at practice and I want to make some adjustments. So here I am now in this other view. This is playlist view. Oh I want to hear the drums and the bass. Okay there we go. Now we've got drums and bass going here. Now, uh, this is the, the one of the views that you have where you can mix on the fly. Now, this is kind of making adjustments after you've created a song, so I'm working backwards here. Um, whenever you make these adjustments, you can do a quick save. That means that it's going to quickly save the adjustments. This is where you're practicing with the band. You're dialing in how the backing track will sound. Right now, I want this song to play... Um, without uh, the bass and the drums because we have a bassist and we have a drummer. So I'm just programming this. So let's take it from the top. How do we get to this? Um, how do we get to having all these playlists? And so uh, one of the things that you do is you go into configuration mode. Okay, so this is where we create the song. But before we can get to anything in there, uh, remember we had that track that was um, hard to handle. Now, I have a bunch of songs that are loaded into here, and as you can see, they're alphabetically ordered. Um, these are all the songs that I have programmed in here. But if you go under H, we can see that there is no hard-to-handle song. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and uh, get that song, uh, and we're going to set it up, and then we're going to include it in one of our sets. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the File Manager here, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new folder because that has to contain all those things. Now, uh, remember, um, uh, I uploaded things to uh, iCloud, um, so we're going to access those in a minute. So this is hard to handle. My iPad's shaking a little bit. That's because I have it on a little stand here. So here we have hard to handle. I'm going to open that. Now I have to go get... <clears throat> The files for the hard to handle song. So I'm going to go to my iCloud here and I just head into my iCloud drive and I have it under track updates and you'll see uh, there's hard to handle. So let's go into that. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go select and I want all those files into this song. So I'm going to do a select all and then I'm going to say open. This uh, iPad is connected to my iCloud account so what I'm doing is I created a folder called Hard to Handle in Multitracker, and I'm taking all those uh, backing tracks from that folder I had on the iCloud, and I'm bringing them right back here into Multitracker. 
Okay, so once the multi-tracker has uh, successfully imported them, it will say transfer successful. Now these are all the tracks that I have available for me to use in that song. So we're going to go back to song configuration down here. And I'm going to see that hard to handle. You have this nice uh, like thumb down here. If I need a song that starts with an S, we're going to go back to hard to handle. I'll hit the H. So I'm going to bring this uh, hard to handle forward here. So what I want to do is I want to um, put all of these hard to handle uh, tracks into uh, insert them into here. I like uh, what I do is I have a system where I have the click in the first track um, trigger vocal cues in the second track bass drums and then any instruments after that. So I start in my regular order. There's the click track. Now I've inserted the um, triggers and then next up is bass. And then next up is uh, drums. And then I have my instruments after that. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. And we're going to call this hard to handle. Hard to handle. So a cool feature about this is I don't want to spend all the time trying to mix this whole thing together. But I do have a song that I do really like the settings on it, and it's called Old Man Down the Road. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up Old Man Down the Road. Uh, let's look for O here. And here's Old Man Down the Road. I load this thing, and I do like the mix that I have for it. So I'm going to take this copy, copy audio settings. All right. So that means that I've saved that, and I'm going to now bring it to my hard to handle song. And rather than poking around and trying to get hard to handle mixed, I just come over here and I'm going to paste that. And there you have all the routings, all the uh, mix and everything. And so here we have it all ready to go. Uh, just a few adjustments. What I do with the click is I have a preset <clears throat> compressor that I put on the click. So I grab myself a uh, preset that I call click. And that's now in there. And then I have my triggers. And I have a, uh, let me see, did I turn that on? No, I didn't. And then I have my triggers, and I turn that on, and I have a compressor that's preset for triggers. So, now what I have is I have a fully mixed, I didn't have to mix this, because I already had a mixed template that I really liked in a different song. So, then you play it. Hard to handle. And Intro. So here you go. One, two, three, four. Now that might sound like, wow, some of the drums are a little bit hot. So you can turn the drums down while you're doing that. Hard to handle. So, Intro. Um, we'll take One, the bass two, a little three, loud. Four. And maybe uh, we can make these adjustments during this thing. And so uh, we'll have the guitar. It might be super loud. We don't know. Let's see what happens. Three, well, I like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save that, and you'll see kind of an opaque, hard to handle. Might be hard to see on the camera. Well, I just hit save. So now I'm going to go over here to playlist view. I go to playlist. Hey, I'd like to add it to this set. Sure, why not? Why don't we do that? So let me just try to get this. Oh, here we go. Okay, so then if I want to add a song in here, then I uh, go over here to my playlist uh, to the left. And I navigate to Hard to Handle. And then uh, you'll notice at the end we have American Band. Well, if I double click Hard to Handle, uh, oops, I guess you only have to click it once. Uh, let me just delete that one. So uh, then you have Hard to Handle down here. And then uh, that becomes a part of your playlist. If you want to change the order, I want Hard to Handle a little bit uh, sooner in. I just click this Edit button up here. And I'm going to go ahead and put it Let's say we want to start out the day with a really hard to handle song. All right, so now we're done. And so here we go. It's showtime. I created my list. And so we're going to go to live view. And now we're going to start with hard to handle. And so here hard we go. Hard to handle. Intro. So this is One, how we're going. One, two, three, four. And that, that's very cool. But as it gets towards the end of the song... automatically proceed to the next
song, but it won't launch. So, which is cool because it's now going to wait. And it's got the title here. You're on Born on the Bayou. And then two back is these different songs. Very cool. So, uh, very nice uh, setup for live. And then uh, let's say, for example, I want to create a new set. Um, I want to have my own set. And so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this set. Uh, I didn't save it, so I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to create <coughs> for, my, excuse me, for myself a new set. Uh, let's start out with Against the Wind, um, American Band. Uh, let's do Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. Um, oh, Suzy Q, why not? Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. Uh, Power of Love. Oh, whoops. Uh, not play that funky. Well, why not put play that funky music in? And then so maybe I want to change that order. Let's put that there because we want to end on that. And so on and so forth. You'll notice as I'm adding music that you'll see the, the overall time of my set changes. So now I put in, see how that changes? Well, I want to get a 45 minute set. So here we're, we're starting to see how we're building up just how long this is going to be. Okay, I'm pretty close. I need a short one. So uh, let's say, uh, give me some loving. There we go. We've hit the 45 minute. Okay, so now we're going to um, change this and we're just going to, I'm just going to label this as train ing. Now I've created my set list. So if I'm getting ready to do a gig, then I'm going to be taking this and, uh, you know, let's say I fire up this thing and it's uh, maybe over here in song configuration and it's looking all blank. So I come to here and I have a, oh, I want to, uh, and let's say I had a different, we were on a yacht set and we played that. Um, so now we want to play a different set and um, I'd like to play um, uh, the training set. So here we are. I just created that set. So now that we're in there, I'm done here. Um, now that we're in there, I have that set that I just created just a second ago, and now we're ready to launch it. And, you know, against now we're going to play wind. against the wind. Intro. And One, so two, So the nice thing three, about this four. is, this uh, place, and just as a final note, um, all of these uh, are routed into, let's say I open against the wind. Um, against the wind has a click, so... The click is going to be going on channel 4. And channel 4 is uh, where that's routed to just in our ears. Um, the triggers are going to be going to the same place. They're going to be going to 4. The bass is going to channel 3. And then all these other respective um, uh, instruments are going to be going to the stereo out 1 and 2. This is what goes to the house, right and left. So that's why you pick... Uh, let's say you have here, you have your right and your left channel. And so this is uh, channel one and channel two. So, and that's how it kind of goes. And then what's cool is this is output one. So this is going to give you some feedback when you select this thing. It'll say, well, what's routed to that? Okay. Uh, what's routed to uh, number uh, two? So that's the other stereo. So this is the click track. If I go here you'll see that the click and triggers are on output four, and you'll see that the bass track is on output three. So if you're saying, oh, to my uh, audio interface, where's everything going? That kind of nails all that down. So overall, um, it's a very cool program. Uh, it's called Multitracker, and uh, it's a fantastic, uh, beautiful uh, thing that I'm using here. And, uh, oh, I'm going to general. Here's what we want. Multitracker. It's, uh, it's a really, really useful tool. And hopefully...